we are going to begin with one moment of meditation. I think the world could use some of that and some of this and some of what's to come, and we're going to do all of it. Uh, we're going to start with ask your questions below. So if you have any questions, go to ask a question. Hello, Kate. Hello, Sukriti. And I'm sure you've already all done it, but please say where in the world you're from, uh, particularly if you're from Berlin or Kansas or Greenwich, Connecticut or Vermont, or where in the world are you from? I'm in Boulder and my dog has just left me. I'm very lonely. He was just with me. Let's all take a great posture, uh, whether we're in sunny Spain or Ann Arbor, Michigan. Take your best posture of the day, Colorado Springs, Ember, hello, Florida, Jan, Texas, Dublin, hey Naomi, Naomi is an editor with us, um, Lindsay, my friend from Maui, uh, Los Angeles, Nebraska, Aurora, uh, Delhi, Pittsburgh, Porto Alegre, Alegre uh, Redstone, Toronto, Pennsylvania. Let's all take a great posture and really do it today. We need it. The world needs it. Take a good posture and relax. Eyes are open. We do not want to close our eyes to what's going on in our world, particularly today. Hello, Michelle in Denver, Fairfield, Seattle, Chico, Toronto. I might have missed a few. Pennsylvania, Washington. Thank you. All right, Bombay. Take a great posture and relax. Find your breath in and out. Let's all bow to one another. You can type bow in parentheses if you'd like. And bow with a sense of respect, friendliness, not taking yourself too seriously, but taking empathy to heart. Not passive empathy, but active empathy. And Molly, who is in Minneapolis, big love to you and your city, all of your city. All right, let's find our breath. In and out. Let's really do it. Hands are open on your palms, no fancy mudras. Just open on your, sorry, your palms on your thighs. Find your breath in and out. If you're distracted, just notice that with gentleness. You don't have to condemn yourself. Label it thinking. Ah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking about Minneapolis. I'm thinking about empathy. I'm thinking about cookies. That's the frustrating and delightful thing about life is we think about silly things. We think about important things. We think about fake things. We think about real things. They're all on some level thoughts. That doesn't mean they don't matter. And we're going to get into that. But let's practice gentleness toward yourself. And when you notice it very precisely to go with that gentleness, precision, thinking, gently come back to your breath. As we do this, we notice thoughts. It can be like a video game. We accumulate points. Those points are really just training our neurosis, our, our monkey mind, our crazy mind, to come back to the present no matter how difficult uh, our circumstances. It doesn't mean we ignore our circumstances. It's the opposite. It means we can engage fully in our circumstances with sanity, with strength, with kindness, with fierce kindness. You can have big muscles and be cowardly. You can have no muscles and be brave. This is a practice for bravery, for being able to be present no matter what's happening. Okay, how is everyone? Maybe let's take the temperature of the room. At least in America, we're having yet another moment of waking up to what many of us are, uh, have been aware of constantly. We're having a societal moment of waking up to what's already been happening. 
Um, I put up an article, maybe Emily and Molly can put up, we have several fantastic articles, one from Priya. Um, these articles will not make you feel better. They will make you feel. Let's put all three of those in the sidebar. One of them is by myself. One of them is by Priya. One of them is by a local Minneapolis lady. Can we put all three in the sidebar? And you can open them up if so inspired and read them later. Okay, there's Priya's. Hey America, I can't breathe. No Justice, No Peace is by Kit in Minneapolis. I asked her for that. The Poster Boy of Police Brutality, please make this man infamous. We can no longer allow those, uh, whether they're police or citizens uh, or presidents to get away with what they're getting away with. So, Let's remember that if your heart is hurting for the world, as Liza is saying, um, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Anyone? So there's 7,116 of us from all over the world. Moments of space, moments of not talking are okay, particularly if, like me, you're um, a white male. Listening can be okay. So yes, it is good to feel empathy. Empathy, as Martin Luther King Jr., Reverend, wrote, empathy can't be polite. Empathy can't be the sort of middle-class white politeness, right? It has to be coupled with action. What are some actions that we can take? What is one action that we can take? What can we do? Call your representatives. What's the phone number? What's the link? Let's all open that up. We can vote. We can vote for those who are willing to look at what is happening, willing to try to slow the revolving of the cycle through generations of not looking, not caring, not feeling. It takes bravery to feel because it's unpleasant, it's scary. If you're like me at all, you may feel unempowered, which is actually a good thing for me to feel. I should not feel empowered here. I should feel like learning. I should feel like listening. But that doesn't mean that I should stand back and say, I'm not gonna get into trouble here. I don't wanna get yelled at. I'm not gonna do anything. We need to all be allies in, yes, what Gail said, be kinder to everyone. And that can't just be an attitude that has to be within our police departments, within our laws, within our courts, Tong Len, within our hearts. Let's put that Tong Len link in here. We can actually practice it. We can talk about it. We can try to come together, which we're doing today. But until we practice it, we won't fundamentally change. We need to fundamentally change here. We need to fundamentally practice being willing to open up and feel and that's where action comes from. That's where hopeful action comes from. Further aggression doesn't help, right? We see that in Martin Luther King Jr.'s words, but that is not, that quote is not to be used to condemn riots, which are what privileged people call protests. It's not to condone violence against violence. But when the, all the tools of the legal state 
have expired and are not available to you, you do what you can. What's the uh, quote? I believe it's by uh, John F. Kennedy, a president, right? No less. And we think of him as privileged, right? White male. But at the time, being Catholic, being Irish, was enough for many, many, many people, the gatekeepers of that time, to say he could not be president. So there's some good stuff. Michelle, text Floyd to 55156 and sign the petition. But texting, signing, all these things, while important, are not enough. What is enough? We got to change our fundamental beings and we have to take actions. This is not enough. It's a tool. What, what else can we do? So there's some suggestions above. Speak up. Be willing to look at your heart. That's where Tonglen comes in. Be willing to have uncomfortable conversations, which, which means listening about racism. And remember, racism is not just uh, prejudice, right? What else is racism? Blakey, teach my son to be anti-racist. Listen, exactly. Listen. A lot of you are saying listening. But listening can't be passive either. We have to listen and then help. We don't want to stand back and be safe wallflowers and allow this to continue. Allowing this kind of thing to continue is being part of the problem. And let's remember our lack of response to COVID. What communities did COVID hit the hardest? What communities, I should not be putting that in the past tense, what communities is coronavirus hitting the hardest? And by hitting, I mean killing in many cases. Anyone? African-American, minorities, the poor, black and brown communities, underprivileged, people of color. Yeah, I think microaggressions are important to be aware of, but we can't allow our mistakes, our ignorance to stop us from helping. I just read a wonderful post this morning that a lot of us don't want us, a lot of people like myself, who care, but are privileged in certain ways, don't want to be called racist, right? So then we don't do anything. We're careful, we're quiet. Yeah, the uninsured. Thank you, Jane, lower income. So coronavirus is hitting minorities, and the uninsured, lower income, Far more essential workers are often far more minorities. Yeah, already have a lower immune system because of the stress, because of the lack of healthcare, food deserts. All the point of this is it's it's systemic. It's like you know when you're traveling and there's a car accident, then there's a delay in traffic for hours. It can go on and on and on after the accident is passed. In this case, the accident isn't even passed, but the ripples of this continue through generation. And remember, you know, Blakey, and thank you for saying that, your anger was awakened by watching George Floyd, Floyd die. I put that entire 10-minute video in my blog. You can't watch that and not feel moved to action. And action has to include changing ourselves. Yes. Many people are saying being anti-racist, not just not racist. We have to be racist. I mean, we have to be anti-racist. And I like that mistake because that's kind of how our society is. We think we're being anti-racist, but we're, we're all racist on some level. We're part of this system. And it's unnecessary. We can allow every child, we can allow every child, we can allow every community to bloom, to blossom. Fundamentally, racism is rooted in ego, in insecurity, in 
in not even loving yourself. Racism is some weird, futile attempt to make yourself feel superior. But wouldn't we all rather live in a world where every child has the opportunity, that which is fundamentally the real American dream. The American dream should not be greed. The American dream should be opportunity based on education, based on being healthy, based on safe streets, based on, you know, support from the family, from the community. Wouldn't we all rather live in a world where everyone very simply has opportunity, has safety, has can find their passion and their love? I just rewatched um, what's that movie with my friend um, La Bamba. And it's about the Mexican Latino community back in the 50s, 60s, and the brother of Richie Valens, since his name is altered from Valenzuela, the brother is a wonderful artist, right? Has anyone seen this movie? He's a wonderful artist, and this is all true. He's a wonderful artist, but he's not able to take advantage of those gifts. Are we together on this? I'm not important here, but staying together here, so, Michelle, thank you. And let's, please, Michelle, I invite you, please share your words to Elephant. So here, Michelle, you're, you're connecting with maybe 7,000 folks. Can we please put the VIP link in the sidebar? So Michelle, please, if we can share your words, your experience to millions of readers on Elephant, that's what Elephant is for fundamentally. We're for a mindful community where people can learn from each other in an open space, roomy, a field beyond right and wrong. You know that quote? Yeah, so the brother of Richie, Val of Richie Valens was an incredible artist, but he uh, had to deal with, you know, prison. He had to deal with alcoholism. He had to deal with, he was quite abusive. He was abused. Elephantjournal.com slash feature. Naomi, thank you. So Michelle, please share your words with Naomi. Naomi will, is the VIP editor, and we'll share that with millions of our readers. And that's how we can begin to share the change the world. Most media is either corporate or it's kind of conspiracy out of crazy town. Do you want to be a part of corporate media information or crazy town? Corporate often has journalistic standards, not always. Thank you, Jen. Hey, Jen. Yes, Michelle, please share. Did, is Michelle there? Hey, Jen. Jen's the biggest, sweetest, sweetiest. She's in Halifax. Thank you. I mean, Michelle, honestly, if you just copy paste what you've already said, you can see people learning and being inspired in a in a painful way being inspired and learning right who here supports michelle just copy paste what you've already written there maybe you've written more on facebook or social media put it in telephonejournal.com slash feature that's vip that'll go directly to naomi who's also on this call she's an elephant editor hey naomi this is a big sweetie gathering. That's what we should rename this, a big gathering of sweeties. And, you know, the expression, uh, meek shall in inherit the earth. Let's edit that a little bit. This, the, those who are brave enough to feel their hearts and not run away or hide shall not inherit, but shall recreate this earth in the image of um basic goodness and opportunity so adrian medium is yet it's not even it is corporate is twitter is big tech owned i have nothing against medium but i do i do judge media and it either has journalistic standards which medium doesn't 
is big tech or corporate backed, which medium is, or it's conspiracy addled. And then there's this line of media that is journalism. And that's what I wrote. Did anyone read what I wrote? We, in my article about this police officer, so-called police officer, who should be disowned by all police officers and needs to be charged. If we don't have sunshine, and I don't mean this in the Donald Trump fighting COVID sense, if we don't have sunshine as a disinfectant in all of our communities, which requires local community journalism, imagine how much this police officer has gotten away with. Imagine how much he has done that hasn't ever even been seen. Can we put my link to uh, Chauvin or whatever his name is in here again? Please open it up. Read the list of the things that he's been caught doing. And he's still a police officer. That list of the things he's been caught doing is probably this much compared to how much he has done without being caught. Yeah, there's that link. Please open that up. Look at that list. That's just the list of things he's been caught doing. And he's still a police officer. Or he was until the other day. Yeah, and I cover that too. Tess. So if we're not, you know, the expression, if we're not, um, yeah, we shouldn't. Amy, it's a good instinct, but remember there's crap media, there's crap media, and then look for good journalism. Journalism is, is, is truth, is the search for truth, kind of like science. It's not perfect, but it's the search for truth. Luz Marina, I'm in Ecuador. You can see drawing a journalist made here. It's so accurate. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so we can't avoid, you can avoid crap media. I don't support Medium. I don't support Facebook. I don't support Twitter. There's good stuff in all of them. But, you know, as we teach in Elephant Academy, you can use social media to get the word out about important things, climate change, racism, police brutality. You can use social media and crap media to get the word out. But don't be a victim of it. Don't be used by it. Rely on good journalism. Melina Paris, I work in good local community journalism. We are trying to consider positive restoration solutions for these tragedies as we go forward in the coming weeks. Melina is my idol. Oh, the light's not good? Maybe turn up the light. I'm seeing myself pretty well. I'll face the light a little more. How's that? A little better? Sorry, it's at an angle now. You can see my Nerf basketball hoop, which is key. I got that at a yard sale. Okay. So it's not enough to be angry. You know that expression, if you're not angry, you're not paying attention. So we do need to be angry, but we can't bury, bury our heads in the sand. We do need to be angry, but then what do we do? Carla, what do we do next? Kari, what do we do next? Noel, what do we do next? Adrian, Sierra, Kristen, Deborah, Marianne, what do we do next? Melina. We have to be willing to feel what's beneath that anger, which is pain, which is sadness, which is heartbreak, and we have to take action. So some people said voting. I guarantee you, and I'm not anti-Republican, but I am anti-Trump. I guarantee you that, and I don't think Trump is really a Republican. I think he's a party of one. I guarantee you that this election will be messed with in November. It's already being messed with through the Honest Voting Project or whatever it's called, which is voter suppression. So how do we win this 
election in November. It's the single most important thing we can do for climate change, which is the fate of the entire world, and which will hit minority communities, poor communities, uninsured communities, people can't afford to move. It'll hit them the hardest. This election will affect police policy and brutality and training. This election will affect anything you can think of. So how do we win this election? If you're in the world, not in the United States, this still applies. We can see Bolsonaro in Brazil pushing the burning of the Amazon, and he got elected through the exact same BS, WhatsApp owned by Facebook, rumors, crazy stuff. Authoritarians around the world are destroying societies and destroying nature. Tess, please write about that. We will make that a national holiday on elephant. But I don't think it's enough to boycott Facebook, Instagram for one day, right? We have to use them to get the word out. On some level, it's fantastic. As Will Smith just said, racism isn't getting worse. It's getting filmed. So we can use Facebook, we can use Instagram, we can use this bullshit media and social media and medium and all that to get the word out. So on some level, this stuff going viral is great, but read the first paragraph of my article where I say we can't depend on this stuff going viral through social media. The Amazon was burning for months because of Bolsonaro before Instagram freaked out and realized the Amazon was burning and then Amazon and then Instagram forgot about it and moved on to Australia and then we forgot about that. And then we moved on last week to, uh, you know, the racist incident in Central Park and now we've forgotten about that. Not really, but we will next week. So viral moments are not enough. We need local journalism. We need to donate to communities that uplift people of color communities and voices, support people of color uh, voices in your own sphere of influence. That's from Kit or KT. There is corruption all over the world, Doris, but let's not get all caps about it. We can do something about it. There's also goodness all over the world. There's sweetness all over the world. There's, there's four-year-old children all over the world who expect us to make this world kinder and fast. Yeah, Kate, thank you. You don't have to keep up with all that's going on all over the world. You live your life, you do your dishes, you fold your laundry, you get angry about things you should get angry about, you care about things you should care about, read and support local journalism, write and help others. Elephantjournal.com slash post is the link for all of us right here. If you all want to write your story, elephantjournal.com slash post. Can we put that link in there? So it may seem completely inappropriate today, but these free community retreats are powered by two things. One, you guys showing up. We're going to stop these retreats because we're just puny little independent media the second that you guys stop showing up. So thank you for coming. The fact that we're at 7,118 people is like, it's moving, you know? There's a lot of good people who care. And we started this just during the coronavirus, during the quarantine. But now we can use this community. What are some ways we can use this community? Write, share, call your congressperson. They listen to calls, call them in overwhelming numbers, vote. And this isn't some liberal thing versus conservative. That's just some weird war. This is vote for policy, vote for kindness, vote to act against climate change, vote for healthcare, vote for equality. And then, so we just, the other thing that's powered by is money. We're independent media. We don't have a whole lot of it. We're successful, but we don't have a whole lot of it. So if you do our brand new course, it's right there. You can learn how to, you know, we built 775,000 Instagram followers mindfully without any advertising. We don't pay for any of those fans. We built more, well, well, probably 11 million Facebook fans. That's huge. MSNBC is corporate, right? They have a budget. They're at like two and a half million Facebook fans. We have 11 million. It's, it's not about size. It's about community. It's about how can we change the world and fast for the better. We have millions of readers a month on our website. So if you want to learn how to change your passion, your 
hobby into a career, Instagram can be a part of that if you learn how to use it. So if you want to grow your Instagram following in a mindful way, that green course is right there and the price is low for you guys, it will go up. And while that may seem separate from everything we're talking about, on some level, communication is the way we are going to change this world. Molly runs the academy. Molly is in Minneapolis. Molly couldn't sleep last night because of the anger and the pain in that, in that city, which is a wonderful city. And it's also a horrible city. It's a wonderful world, as Louis Armstrong sang, and it's a horrible world, as we know. So we start with ourselves, as Liza said. Let's put that basic goodness article in the sidebar. Please read basic goodness. Please read elephant. Please share it. You're not going to agree with, is that, are we going to agree with everything on elephant? There's the basic goodness. Thank you, Rachel. And yeah, we need to stop stealing from culture. But we also don't want silo isolation, siloization. We don't want all the whiteies in the South over here not learning. Communities learn from each other. The world mixes, but it has to be done with respect. Yeah, Tess, I don't agree with everything on Elephant. I can't stand some of the articles on Elephant. I'm vegan. I am into journalism. I don't like astrology crap, right? But communities are going to disagree. What kind of community, what do you call a community that never disagrees, that does not allow disagreement? What do you call that kind of community? A community that brooks no disagreement. What do you call that? A cult. We don't want to be that. So a lot of people will always say, I'm leaving Elephant because of the single article. I hate it. I don't like lots of articles on elephant, but I'm building up a tolerance to allow the notion that not everybody in the whole world thinks exactly like me, that I can actually learn from others sometimes. And I can disagree respectfully. Yeah, it's a dictatorship, it's stagnant, it's a cocoon. I think I've put that link in the sidebar a million times, but can we put cocoon in the sidebar? It's a wonderful read. Yeah, but that impression of elephant is a preconception, is prejudging. We have an incredibly diverse writership, people who write on elephant from all over the world. It is mostly women, and I'm proud of that. Men have run media. And if you think I run elephant, you're half right. The other half is that I'm, I'm the least intelligent person in every meeting I'm ever in. And we need men in my case, raised by a, a powerful single mom, shout out to the powerful single moms, to learn to listen. And that's something I've had to practice. It's a practice just like Tom Lin. Listening is strength. Listening is, I think the Dalai Lama has a quote on that. When you talk, you don't learn. When you talk, you're just sharing what you already know. Yeah, Emily, every time I'm in a meeting with Emily there, I'll tell you for sure who's smarter in that room. Do I have some wisdom? Yes, none of this is, you know, I'm not being insincere here. We do have wise older women as well, for sure. Oh, us, yes, of course, please. We need so much. We need more and more and more and more and more diversity until you're lost in diversity and you can never identify the community, the one community. Please test elephantjournal.com slash Feature will go directly to Naomi, elephantjournal.com slash post. If you wanna just post it yourself. Deborah, in college a professor stated, we don't disagree and debate anymore. Yeah, we all just stick to our sides. Then we, she pointed to me, except we know Deborah disagrees and she's going to get a D. Someone in the class blurted it out and I did and I debated that too and got the grade raise, but we were programmed not to speak truth to power. Amen. There's a wonderful uh, blog on elephant, um, Emily or Molly, if you can search success trumpa, I think it's like the Buddhist key to success. It's exactly what Deborah is 
is the opposite of, of that story, that anecdote that Deborah is sharing. Success, Trumpa Buddhist. Yeah, Michelle, please, we need you. We need you. We all need you. We all need each other. We all need um, also, while we're looking at equal rights, and it is not the same, human beings are not the same as animals, but there are millions and millions of pigs being mass slaughtered in China. Factory farms are, are torture. Pandemics, which are affecting black and brown communities far more than they are affluent communities. Pandemics come from animal agriculture, which is such a weird euphemism. Sounds like you're farming animals in a kind of nice way. Like here's some corn, here's some pigs. It's all very nice. It's not like that. We need to look at veganism. If you haven't seen Game Changers, I interviewed those folks. Maybe we can put my interview with Game Changers. Beware of there's a, a naughty word in there. Oh, Deborah, thank you. New author. Oh, and she won. She got paid. Maybe Secreti, you were her editor. Let's put her article in. Put Deborah's article in here. There's Trung Primshane. It's exactly what that Buddhist teacher is saying, exactly what Deborah was talking about. Can people see that link? A Buddhist recipe for success. That's me. Not me. I just typed it in there. Yeah, there's game changers. So please watch that stuff because love is not conditional, right? Once we start loving, thank you, Sakriti. Sakriti is another wonderful editor of ours, of our team. Thank you, Sakriti. She's also a vegan chef. Yeah, Sakriti, maybe you can put the link in there. I'm thinking about animals because there's this bug crawling across my desk right here. And my first instinct was to flick it away. And then you say, eh, it's got antenna, it's got little legs, I might hurt it. Why not just let it keep walking? It's not hurting anyone. There's Deborah's articles. article. Random chaos, the positive potential of crisis and five takeaways. Let's all read Deborah's article. And do you have to agree or not? Who knows? Just have an open mind with discernment. Open mind doesn't mean you believe conspiracy BS. Okay, so if anyone has questions or things we want to talk about, put them in ask a question. If anyone wants to mindfully, mean, meaning be a benefit without being addicted, grow your Instagram community, please do the brand new course. We worked hard on it. And if say five of you do it, that'll keep us going, these, these retreats. And I know these retreats seem weird, it's just me, with a yellow wall behind me. Are people enjoying these? I hope so. Elizabeth signed up. So there's one out of the five. Thank you, Elizabeth. Where in the world is Elizabeth? But these retreats aren't about me and a yellow wall. They're about all of us coming together and they're about caring about truth and caring about empathy and doing something. Karen is gonna do it, I think. Jan is gonna do it. Jan already did the Academy, I think was a mentor, Kristen. KT, Tina, Melina, Doris, Adrian. I don't know what you're all saying yes to. You can't all be doing this course. Oh, you are. Elise, did I say your name right? I always have to think about it. Jen. Jen is a dear, used to work with us. She's in Halifax. She's been affected by the coronavirus, her job. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, we needed you. Michelle, that's the joke, right? That's the, what Buddhists call the cosmic joke. You, you really needed y'all today, us today. We really needed you. Who here needed Michelle today? And Michelle, if you share it on Elephant, thousands and thousands and thousands of readers are gonna need you. Need you. And you're gonna need all of them. And that's real community. We need each other. We're, um, what, what, what's the definition of friendship in Le Petit Prince, the little prince? What's the definition of friendship? Anyone? In the little prince. Le Petit Prince, which I have right downstairs. Amy needed to hear Michelle today. Abby needed. Noel needed. Diane needed. Amanda, 
What's the definition of friendship in The Little Prince? Anyone? <sighs> Rachel, thank you. You're gonna make me cry. Shared with friends today and already signed up for both. This is the most grounded online activity I have ever have had ever. Why? Because community, because of you guys. Not just because of you guys. It's like we create a container, right? That is about being a benefit. Our hashtag, which makes it sound silly, is maybe a benefit. But if you're going to use hashtags, if you're going to use Facebook, if you're going to use Instagram, if you're going to use WhatsApp, use it with intention, with trying to be a benefit, right? Um, is anyone getting the little prince? No, you all need to reread it. Caring for each other is close. He says, if we're friends, then we create ties to one another. We create bonds. We, we tie ourselves to one another. We create a bond. And what you what happens to you affects me and what affects me affects you. We're vulnerable to one another. Has any one of you been hurt by a friend or a lover? That's because you, you made a tie, you made a bond. Is That's a wonderful quote, Jody, but the, but the quote about friendship is, yes, being tamed, Jackie. Yes, oh, and Abby, I'm sorry, establishing ties, being tamed. Allison, you, a bunch of you got it, sorry, I missed it. And that's what we're doing with Michelle, that's what we're doing hopefully in this entire community. We are all connected, but we forget that. And that's why my, one of my favorite poems is John Dunn for Whom the Bell Tolls. I don't know if I've ever blogged that. But every time you click an elephant link, you make our entire day. Every time you, I'm not going to do my subscribe pitch, but every time you subscribe on elephant, you know, if 10, 10, I need to not do it. But it's, but it's super huge for elephant. Just that, said the fox to me. You are still nothing more than a little boy who's just like a hundred thousand other little boys. You're just a random thing. And I have no need of you. And you on your part have no need of me. To you, I am nothing more than a fox, like a hundred thousand other foxes. This is why we don't, we eat meat, right? Or dairy. Who cares? It's a cow. Who cares? Cow had a baby. Who cares about the baby? But if you tame me, then we shall need each other. To me, I need my dog. I, you know, dogs aren't different than cows, particularly in terms of their worth or pigs. So why, why is it bad to kill a dog? Well, it is, but why is it bad to kill a dog, but not a pig? But if you tame me, then we shall need each other. To me, you will be unique in all the world. To you, I shall be unique in all the world. And that is reality. Elephantjournal.com slash subscribe, Michelle. Uh, yeah, you can use PayPal and it's really cheap, Michelle. We keep it cheap for a reason. And when you subscribe, you see fewer ads. You can read unlimited and, and hopefully you can be a little bit enlightened every single day. And if you have a right, you can in, in return the favor. You can enlighten people back. Yeah, Lindsay, exactly. If you listen to cows crying once, their baby calves are taken away, you may think differently. Elephantjournal.com slash subscribe. All Redford, yeah. I don't know where he is though, He's, he just left. I don't like it because I need him. Yeah, please read that poem, For Whom the Bell Tolls. It tolls for thee. Do not send to know for whom the bell tolls. Don't ask, why is that bell ringing? Who died? What happened? The, the bell tolls for thee because we are all part of the continent. And if a clod be washed away from the main part of the continent, that we are the less for it. If we lose one person, which we just did, obviously, we've lost many. And it's not getting worse, it's getting filmed. Let's remember that. So when George Floyd is murdered, in broad daylight, while being filmed, we are all the less for it, whether we realize it or not. And that's kind of the magic of it. Even if we're a racist, we're the less for it.
Oh yeah, KT, and when you subscribe, you can make articles that you like more visible to others. You can help them get featured. You can help them like Deborah, who wrote that article up above, get paid for it. We pay writers who um, share worthwhile articles as judged by you readers. Yeah, Moss, exactly. Racism isn't getting worse, it's getting filmed. And how, oh, Kat, you might have just joined. We've been talking about George and this situation the entire time. You can watch the video from the beginning. Yeah, and please don't use Google. Google is part of the problem, right? It's rife with conspiracy theories. YouTube, use, what's better than Google? Ecosia, DuckDuckGo, instead of Chrome, use um, Firefox. And you're a good person. I'm not saying anything is wrong. Um, just that we have to stop being used. And if you want to learn how to use for the benefit of others, there's our new course that we just created. We worked hard on that. All right. Uh, let's go and ask a question. How do you juggle? So maybe we're going to um, move into a into a different phase of this conversation for the next nine minutes. Is that okay with everyone? It doesn't mean we're ignoring or forgetting. How do you juggle being so digitally connected as a profession and regulating the anxiety and neurological addiction of it all? Michael, well, who here, in, when you're scrolling on Instagram or Facebook, as I might've done last night, for hours, does it feel good? One word question, when you get addicted, when you're scrolling endlessly and you don't know why, does it feel good? We're having some highs from the prior question mixed in, but no, it doesn't. You, you, that seed of awareness in your mind knows that what you're doing doesn't feel good. So that's actually really helpful. A lot of us say fear is bad. But fear in some ways is just awareness of threat. So that awareness is aware that this addictive behavior isn't watering who you are, your fundamental goodness. But you keep doing it because Facebook and Instagram and Medium and all these things that are built by big tech are experts at what they do. Jackie, it's not your fault. Joan, it's not, or uh, whoever, it's not your fault. It is built to be addictive. They've studied how to make it addictive. Marianne, it's not your fault. It doesn't mean it's not not your fault too. We can take responsibility through meditation. We can develop a ability to pop out of that neurosis because basically that addictive quality is just solid thought, similar to neurosis. So elephant is not built that way. I'm fighting that all the time. We don't want you to keep clicking just mindlessly. We want you to click things that will help you learn more and to be a better person. So when we share relevant, we call them relevant, like elephant, but relevant. It's kind of cute in my mind. Some people don't think it's cute. We have relevant links and often they're challenging. Often there are things you might disagree with. Again, if you disagree with elephant, that's a good sign, but you gotta stay. You gotta have that respect. You gotta have that debate. Don't just peace out. I'm out of here. Go to hell. It is a little your fault, Amanda, for sure. But remember, you're just being a victim. So how do you use it to be a benefit? It's that green button right there. And we've done it. We've done it successfully. We've done it to be a benefit, hopefully. And we try every day. And we've done it, um, you know, we've accumulated a huge community. Thank you. Most of you probably heard about this free retreat. Who here heard about this free retreat series from Instagram? So how do you juggle being so digitally connected? Number one, keep your phone out of your bedroom. Anyone? Who here is willing to keep your phone out of your bedroom at night? Keep your phone in the bathroom, put it on mute, put it on do not disturb, turn the Wi-Fi off, all three of those. Turn the Wi-Fi off, do not disturb, mute it, plug it in. I have mine in the bathroom. Don't have it any closer than that. Get it away or down the hall or in the next room. 
Number two, wherever your couch is, can everyone think of your couch or your comfortable chair? Whatever you watch TV in, is everyone thinking of your couch or your chair? Anyone thinking of your couch or your chair that you sit in at night? Anyone? One yes, give me one yes, give me one yes, one yes, yes. Think of your couch or your chair where you sit at night. Hi, James. Keep that phone away from that. Do not allow yourself to be sitting down with your phone at night. Number three, only put it put in the bathroom at night and you'll hear the alarm. Put it, you know, one room across. My bathroom is two rooms away from my bedroom. There's one intermediary room. So you'll still hear the, you can train yourself, you know, you'll hear it. You'll hear your alarm if I use the alarm on my phone. Also the sunshine, you know, will wake you up unless you black curtain it. Um, the other thing I do is uh, don't bring the phone, let alone the laptop, come on, into the bathroom with you. Don't sit on the john with your phone or your laptop. Those three steps, don't have it in your bedroom. Don't allow it near your couch or chair where you sit at night and don't bring it into the bathroom with you. Who here is sad? This is getting a little gross, but it's kind of fun gross if there's any kids here. Who here is sat on the toilet for longer than 20 minutes on Facebook or Instagram? I bet no one will admit this. My husband does that, yeah. Never you though, right? Lindsay, I might have done it, Karen, stop it. Yeah, that's the Trump way. That's where he does all his great tweets. Don't do it. Bring If you have to read something in there, bring a, a New Yorker or something. But basically, like I, I've talked a lot about like protect the moments of space in your life. Protect the moments of space in your life. Can, that, can anyone um, explain that? So when you go to the bathroom, maybe don't do anything. Maybe just sit there. Do your stuff, look out the window, look around the bathroom, have a moment of space, protect your moments of space. And that allows, who here is stressed out sometimes? If you're stressed out, you're not allowing enough moments of space. Let go of the need to be constantly doing. Abby, beautiful. So that's what I do, Michael. I, I don't allow the phone in my bedroom at night. I will read it in my bed in the morning, but I'm I'm either working or reading the New York Times. That can be a little dangerous because I'm kind of too comfortable, but for the most part, I allow it. And then not at night. Allow yourself to chill out at night. At night, if you don't have to work, try to chill out. Try to fully watch a movie, fully watch a thing, fully watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, fully read a book, fully hang out with your family or your friend or your loved ones. Yeah, but but Deverin, it's not all about a digital detox because it's not like toxic and then detox. We need to find a middle way. The Buddha talked about the middle way, the middle path. So how do we use these things mindfully? That's our course, Instagram. How do you grow Instagram mindfully without ruining your life while actually changing your hobby or your passion into something that can be a benefit to the world or, or benefit the whole world. Does that make sense? So that's our course. I hope a couple of you are taking it. Um, yeah, I don't like having the phone in the tub either. I wouldn't allow anywhere where you're physically kind of victimized, where you're stuck in one place, don't allow it too much. The tub of water is so healing. Water is so healing. Water is so healing. Can we end by putting, uh, Emily, the 21 non-spiritual things that help you, that are good for you or something like that? My blog is about water partially. Yeah, it's kind of moderation, but it's a willingness to also do it fully. So we're not talking about, oh, I'm kind of moderate about racism. You, have, you need to be anti-racist. But at the same time, you don't, 
Um, you know, anyway, we have to be careful with our words. Okay, Noel, oh, we're out of time. Can we save all of these questions for next time? And I promise I'll get to them. Noel, I'll get to yours. But maybe take that question, since we're out of time, take that question, write about it. The link is elephantjournal.com slash post. There's that blog, 21 non-spiritual things that make us happy. Yeah, no phone in the tub. Okay, folks, we're wrapping up. If you missed it, you can go back. And again, it's not just watching me, it's the whole community. Thank you so much. Um, is anyone doing the account? Can, can a couple people just, if you are doing the academy course, if you are subscribing, can you say which one you're doing and say yes? And then right now, let's end with a bow. Let's all end together. Don't just end um, on your own. So let's take a great posture. Take a good old breath, which is a privilege as someone pointed out. Take a good posture, take a good breath. And with respect and friendliness, give it away. Okay, Joan signed up. Rachel is doing both courses. Blakey is in the Academy as a subscriber. Let us know if we can improve it. Mark, Academy. Elise just signed up for the Instagram. Doing the Academy, Tanya. Tess is doing the Find Your Voice course. All of those links are at elephantjournal.com slash academy. Can we put that in? Anyone else subscribing, doing the Find Your Voice course? Anyone? Deborah, let's put that Deborah link in again. Academy Cat, and if you missed today's gathering, you can rewatch the whole thing. It's right here. Abby, don't make yourself, but yeah, sometimes a, a little leap. I did it in the fall and highly recommend it, Deborah. I might have missed a few. Kate got a raise last week. Yes, I don't think Kate's here this week. Kate should have been here. So she could have confirmed the fact. Noel, yeah, Noel, Kate did get her raise. Oh yeah, there was an email in your inboxes with Kate and her family. And Kate said she almost cried because her husband has been laid, laid off. Her wonderful husband has been laid off uh, because of coronavirus. So it was small, but it was huge. You know, these small th acts of kindness are huge for one another especially when they raise us up above the sort of minimum wage land. Allie, that's fantastic news. Thank you. There's Deborah's article. Elephantjournal.com slash retreat for all the links. Okay. Yeah, Molly needs some extra love. If anyone is still here, please give Molly some love and a big hug. Molly is in. Minneapolis, she's been having a, a bit of a rough time. Please give Molly some love. Molly, I love you, you're wonderful, you're a big sweetheart. And everyone loves you, who knows you. And she's a vegan chef. And she's the head of the academy with Emily. These are very safe hugs. Okay. Yeah, hugs to the whole city, amen, a woman, a children.